Many of us rely on smartphone ride-hailing apps. In April, 34-year-old Yolandi Burgess went missing after leaving OR Tambo Airport in a car she hailed at the airport. There's a variety of e-hailing taxi and cab services on the market for passengers to choose from. But when app-based systems are bypassed, it opens up opportunities for criminals to enter the system. The murder of Yolandi Burtas in April, whose body was found in the Val River, sent shockwaves through the country. Shortly before her murder, she travelled from George to Or Tambo Airport in Johannesburg. Megan Davies says she still has nightmares about being kidnapped as she was misled at the OR Tambo airport by a bogus driver. It freaks me out. It could have gone horribly wrong. Just due to the fact that you're naive and you believe, you trust. The 2019 to 2020 statistics show a 16% increase in kidnappings in South Africa, with 6,623 cases reported. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel and thank you very much for joining me here again today. So as you can see I got bored of my hair, cut it almost all off and dyed it back to close enough to my natural root color. But listening to my hair chronicles is not why we're here because last week we spoke about the Raymond Bass case and if you haven't seen that that case is just wild and it is incredibly disturbing how these things were happening right under our noses just a decade ago. But if you haven't seen that case, I'll link it up here for you. But today we are going to talk about an incredibly bizarre case that was suggested to me. So thank you very much. But this case is bizarre because it started with a missing person report and ended with missing body parts. Absolutely crazy. But let's dive headfirst and let's jump into today's case. Intended for mature audiences only. On the 26th of April, 2021, Yolandi Boerter was on a flight from George, which is a holiday destination on the Garden Route here in the Western Cape, and is the second largest city within the Western Cape province. So Yolandi boarded the plane, nothing strange or out of the ordinary. She then flew from George Airport to OR Tambo Airport, which is one of the main airports here in South Africa, and it's in Johannesburg, Gauteng. And this flight is just less than an hour, around 55 minutes. So Yolandi's now landed in the OR Tambo International Airport. She then grabs her thing out of the little baggage compartment at the top. She would then head out of the plane and towards the taxi area where most of the taxis would wait for people or travelers to take them wherever they needed to go. But as Yolandi is walking from the plane to the taxi area, she's now texting her husband who lives in George and she's telling him that she's landed safely. She also lets her other family members know that she's landed safely and she's busy texting her husband, like I said. But as Yolandi's walking towards this taxi, she actually decides that she's not going to use one of the taxis that are waiting outside. She decides to then go on an app on her phone and calls a specific company or a e-hailing taxi. And because this case is ongoing, they've kept the specifics of exactly which company or e-hailing taxi company was used. But now something happened between Yolandi calling this taxi via the app, her getting into the car and her on her way to the destination. Because sadly, Yolandi never reached the destination that she was heading towards. And because of what we're going to talk about later in the text correspondence to her husband, a missing person was put out almost immediately and her face was plastered everywhere on the missing person's websites. Now there were reports that Yolandi lived in George with her then husband and she was in Johannesburg to visit her children who lived there with her ex-partner. But this reason for her being in Joburg is a rumor at best and this case is full of mysteries and questions that we don't have answers to. But let's get into the facts that we know about this case. And I say that very lightly because this case, like I said, is full of mystery. And we really don't know where things start and end with this case because it is very bizarre. Now, sadly, when Yolandi landed, we don't exactly know what happened once she called that e-hailing taxi and she got into the vehicle and drove away. Because, sadly, on the 4th of May, 2021, two men or a father and son were busy fishing near the Vol River. And while they were busy fishing, one of the men looked over and they found dismembered body parts. And because Yolandi was reported missing and her family had given quite a lot of detail about what she looked like, tattoos that were on her body, police were able to confirm via a tattoo, a very unique tattoo, that it was Yolandi Buertas. 
So Yolandi went missing on the 26th of April and on the 4th of May she was found dismembered. Now when Yolandi landed she spoke to her family and let her know where she was. She also spoke to her husband and told him apparently that she was seeing a prominent businessman in Joburg and she also told her husband that as soon as she got into the taxi she had to call this businessman. There were also reports that she sent the instructions that the businessman sent to Yolandi to her husband so that he could also see what she was being sent. So this is why I say her actually being in Joburg and the reasons behind her flying to Joburg were quite unclear. We are unsure whether it was for her children or for this businessman or for both. But apparently, according to some articles, when she got into the e-hailing taxi, there was CCTV footage of her going to a mall. And I think the mall was called Square Mall. And this was in Boxburg. But apparently she was seen on the CCTV footage in the mall at 12 minutes past 11. And then at quarter past 11, Yolandi then sent a text message to her husband in George saying, quote, everything is fucked up, end quote. And apparently she also said then that the plans have changed. Apparently, a few minutes later, Yolandi then sent another text message to her husband saying that they are leaving Square Mall and they're now going to Fundervale Park. Then her husband hears nothing for around 15 minutes. And then at 11.36 on the same day, the 26th of April, Yolandi's husband then gets another message from Yolandi saying that they are now going to this businessman's house to have lunch because they've wasted all that time now in the morning. Now they're going to have lunch and just talk about things. Now apparently Yolandi's husband then asked her to send a pin of where she is and she did send her location pin to her husband. But apparently after she sent the pin, everything went dead, her phone died and there was no more communication now from Yolandi. Now, I already have a lot of questions about what we've just spoken about, but we'll continue with what we know so far, and then we'll circle back to these questions. But as I mentioned before, the sequence of events already is quite wishy-washy, but we'll go with it. So apparently police have kept all communication from Yolandi's husband and between Yolandi. So this whole communication between the two of them, police are working through to investigate where the pin was and all of that information. And then a specialized task team was appointed when Yolandi first went missing to try and figure out why and where she went missing from and then also once her dismembered body parts were found in the river then the specialized task team kind of took a step back and then the murder team was sent in to investigate this case. So while researching this case I came across a few pictures and that's kind of where we will now head into the conspiracies I would say about this case and I want to talk about some of these photos. So like I said while researching there was this photo at an apparent Airbnb where it was believed that Yolandi was possibly murdered in. And I'll show you the image here now. However, in the first articles that were released right after Yolandi's murder, in the area of Kempton Park, on the 1st of May 2021, a man checked into the said hotel room and was supposed to only be there for one night, but he extended his stay to two nights. Then, the only person seen to visit this man in the said hotel room was another man, and he was then seen on CCTV footage entering the home. He was also seen leaving the home in the early hours of Saturday mornings. So one of the men checked in on the Friday, and he was only supposed to stay there for one night until Saturday. He then extended his stay for one more day, and he checked out on Sunday. But the point is, there were only two men in this hotel room. The one who was actually staying in the hotel room and this guy who was now visiting him, who was seen to have left on CCTV footage. According to CCTV as well, the man who was actually checked in left on Sunday morning at half past six in the morning and he just left. Then when the cleaning crew came to clean the room for the next guest, they knocked on the door and knocked and there was no answer. So they just tried the handle and it was unlocked. So the cleaning services then walked in and they saw so much blood on the floor that they just stepped back and they went straight down to reception and called the police and an ambulance was sent down. And the reason that an ambulance was sent down was because they were actually unaware if anyone was still in the room and who had actually been injured but once the ambulance got there they saw that there was no one who had been injured in the room there was no one in the room but when they had a look around they saw that there was a chair in the shower with blood all over the walls and there was blood on the floor with a knife it was very messy so when Yolandi went missing on the 26th of April and when this news broke out close to the time that her dismembered body parts were found people then automatically linked the two together because they thought that this bloody area near Kempton Park was the scene of the crime 
time where Yolandi had been murdered and then her body parts had been dismembered and thrown into the Vol River. So this hotel was automatically assumed to be linked to the murder. However, DNA was taken by the police and later on DNA would confirm to be no match to Yolandi and it was actually an unknown male's DNA. So we could actually ask ourselves... <laughs> Okay, but what actually happened in this room? There's so much blood. But apparently police say that it's not uncommon to actually see blood in a hotel room. Sometimes people stay there and do drugs. Sometimes they try and end their own lives. And they either get a massive fright and they panic and they get scared and they run around and they then try and leave. So anything could have actually happened in this room, but there was no body. And because there was no body, police didn't really investigate further into this. And this is just even more baffling. So now we've been into some conspiracy theories about the room, but now let's get into some theories about why Yolandi could have been murdered or why she was murdered. But before we get into the theories of why Yolandi was possibly murdered, we just need to take a step back and remember that Yolandi's family are really going through hell. Her children have to deal with their mother being murdered. Her husband has to deal with losing his wife. And other really close members to Yolandi have lost a friend and family member as well. And this is still an ongoing and active case. So the wounds are really, really fresh all the time. So our thoughts are out there with Yolandi's family. But some of the theories that a lot of people thought may have happened or to be the reason as to why Yolandi was murdered are that there may have been some type of sex act involved or extortion or bribery. There may also be that she owes money or there was a lot of debt and now the people were coming to collect their debt. It could be over a relationship or lover or a relationship gone wrong. Could possibly be gangs. It could also possibly be wrong place, wrong time, or actually just an accident. Maybe something happened at the house where Yolandi was having lunch, and the person who was there did something, panicked, and tried to get rid of the evidence by dismembering her in hopes that he would never get caught. And the reason why I say he is that as far as it seems to the police that the most likely suspect is male, due to the way that she was murdered and because of the dismemberment, according to police. So down below, I will link the task team that is involved in this case, as well as the numbers you can call if you know any information. Also, Yolandi's family is offering a half a million rand reward for anyone who can provide information, which then allows for a prosecution, sentencing, and incarceration of the person or people who did it. Now, like I said, this case is absolutely bizarre because we know things, but we also know nothing. Now we do know that police are working behind the scenes and that they are trying to solve this case. And that may also be why there's so much information that is not really adding up because police may be withholding information that is vital to this case. And also remember, the police don't owe the public any information that may jeopardize the case. As long as Yolandi's family is kept up to date and informed about what is happening in her case, that should really be all that matters. But let me know what you think of this case down below. I hope that you are all doing very well. Also, let me know down below what you think happened to Yolandi and what theories you may have of what actually happened to her on the 26th of April. Do you think that she survived a couple days until she was found near the river? Or do you think that something happened the same day and she was murdered and dismembered and sent straight to the river on the 26th of April? But let me stop chatting. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend further. Thank you for everything and I'll see you again soon. Bye.